You're listening to More Than a Song, episode 21. Hello, and welcome to this episode of More Than a Song. My name is Michelle Nizat, and that was my daughter Emily, and this is the podcast dedicated to helping you discover the truth of Scripture hidden in today's popular Christian music. My goal is to teach you to connect portions of God's Word with the songs you're singing along with on the radio, to help you meditate on truths that will transform your way of thinking and ultimately your life. Big Daddy Weave's song, Redeemed, was released over two years ago in April of 2012, yet it continues to play on our radios, in our churches, and on my playlist. But why did I pick it for this week's title? First, Always because it can point us back to scripture, but also because I realize that for myself, the word redeemed is just one of those words that I know what it means, but I find it hard to describe it to others. And then I really want to understand it better so that I can describe it better. And as with anything, my preparation for today's podcast has brought me to a deeper understanding of what Christ's redemption really is and thus deepening my love for this song because of the truth that it reminds me of every time I hear it. So let's get started, and I can think of no better way to start than at the beginning of the song. to be a word in there that resonates with you. Is it struggle? Is it haunted by your past? Are you bound up in shackles? I've had the opportunity over the past few weeks to sit down and have some real conversations with several friends. And some are believers and some are not, but we are, we live in our busy, complete the next task, keep up with the Joneses, I'm so blessed culture. But even in the midst of that, there are there are some real struggles. And there are ghosts and there are chains that we all have. And maybe we don't take the time to really think about them or take the risk to talk about them. And although your circumstances may not change with the knowledge that you're going to gain today, I really hope that your perspective will. Because God is trying to tell us that the battle has already been won and we have the name Redeemed. And I am redeemed. Set me free So I'll shake off these heavy chains And wipe away every stain I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed I'm redeemed God's story of redemption is woven through the Old and New Testament. And I'm so excited about the thought that if you can understand this idea just a little bit better today, that it's going to change your perspective as you read God's Word in general from now on. And last week I told you that to redeem is to gain or regain possession of something in exchange for payment. And this is Webster's definition of that word. But I really want to unpack this thought a little bit more as it is seen in the Bible. And the idea of redemption in the Old Testament 
really takes its start from the thought of property. So money is paid according to the law to buy back something which must be delivered or rescued. And so the word redemption throughout the whole Old Testament is really used in that general sense of deliverance. God is the redeemer of Israel in the sense that he is the deliverer of Israel. So hold on to this thought. If you are redeemed, then you had to have been redeemed from something and there must be a redeemer or a deliverer. So in the Old Testament, you see this deliverance includes deliverance. He he delivers the people from all sorts of evil, from national misfortune, from plague, or from calamity of any sort. And the relationship that God had with Israel was twofold. He had both a claim upon Israel and an obligation toward Israel. So Israel belonged to him, and so he could choose how he moved. But on the other hand, because Israel belonged to him, he has an obligation to redeem them. God has given me my children, and so they belong to me. And so I do have freedom to choose to parent them in the way that I deem appropriate. But I also have an obligation to parent them the way that God has laid out. I just have an obligation to be a good parent. So even though it's, you can kind of see this idea in the Old Testament as it relates to God, um, Israel, excuse me, belonging to God, but also God having that obligation to redeem Israel. And then when we get to the New Testament, the idea of redemption has more of a suggestion of ransom. And our Redeemer, who is Christ, purchased our deliverance by offering himself as payment for our redemption. And that is where we are headed in scripture today. We are going to head to Ephesians chapter 1. Paul spent a little over two years teaching and discipling the new believers in Ephesus. And just a few short years after he left, Paul received reports that those new hearts had reverted back to old habits. And things were a bit of a mess, and the word came back that the old behaviors of rage and immorality, lying, stealing, and gossip were all resurfacing. And so Paul wrote a letter to address this sad turn of events. But what's interesting is instead of starting out with criticism, correction, disappointment, or even just a good fussing, he takes the time to first remind them of who they are. They are adopted, they are redeemed, and they are sealed. Today we're going to focus on redeemed, but it would be a good place to hang out this week to really consider all three, adoption, redemption, and sealed. So Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, which is where we're going to talk, kind of sit today, it says, Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us, who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom. Other versions say redeemed right there. He purchased our freedom, or he redeemed us with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. So first of all, this redemption was part of God's master plan for us before he made the world. That idea is very unfathomable to me, but it is worth pondering a bit that he, he, he decided all of this. He had a master plan he, he, he could see us in the future before the world even began. So next he had to redeem us because we were in bondage of a certain thing and we had to be purchased by God to become his own so that he could bring us into that inheritance that he has for us. He had to deliver us. And just like the picture that he painted with Israel, the whole time he was displaying who he was to Israel, he had us in mind. Before he made the world. That's crazy to me. So as you're reading some of these Old Testament um, stories. And as you can kind of begin to see this redemption plan. This rescue plan from the beginning of time. Played out 
um, as an example, almost like a story, an allegory through Israel, he had us in mind the whole time. And I'm going to show this one nation who I am and how loving I am and what a great father I am. I'm going to show this one nation this so that I can reveal myself to the whole world so that one day Michelle Nizat's going to be sitting in her loft recording her podcast and get it that I had her in mind before I even created the world. It's just really crazy. So I hope you have time to stop and think about that. So redemption then is the deliverance by the payment of a price. And everybody in the world is captive. Everyone that comes into this world is a captive. The Bible says that we are slaves. No man is free. Every person in the world is a slave to their sinful state. Who are they slaves to? Who is the captor? Who is the captor of every man? Well, listen to this. John 8, 34 says, men are slaves to sin. Romans 6, 17 says, men are servants to sin. Romans 7, 14 says, we're sold under sin. Romans 8, 21 says, we are in bondage to corruption. So who then or what is the captor of men? It's sin. What are the chains that bind us? Bind us? The chains of sin. So sin is the captor that holds men, and sin demands a price to be paid to release its victim. So what is that price? Well, Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So the price or the wage of sin is what? It's death. The price of sin is death. So in order to purchase sinners from the grasp of sin, there must be death. Hebrews 9.22 says, Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So, but Jesus redeemed us. So what does that mean? Well, it means he paid the price of sin to free the slave to set him free. And that's the whole point of redemption. That's exactly what he did. He paid the price to set you free. He paid the price to set me free. But it's really not until a person recognizes his sin that he seeks to be bought out of the slave market and that he offers himself to Jesus to receive the gift. So do you hear what I'm saying, though? You really, until you recognize that you are indeed in bondage to sin that until you can come to that place then you won't seek to be bought out of that slave market you won't understand how in bondage you really are so once you get to that place place that's when you begin to offer yourself that's when you offer yourself to Jesus to receive that gift that ransom that redemption price that by the way has already been paid And by the way, he's not like weighing it in the balance. Hmm, I wonder if I really want to do this. He is, has decided before he even developed the world that this was his plan, that he was going to redeem you and offer the gift. And I've said over and over and over again that you just have to receive it. It's already been paid. The word for redeemed in the Greek is apolutrosis. And it can be translated redeemed or repurchase. And here's the key. The word emphasizes the distance or the safety margin that results between the rescued person and what previously enslaved them. That's crazy. The distance or safety margin that results between the rescued person and what previously enslaved them. Christ has purchased distance between us and the sin that so easily entangles us. And for the believer, the prefix apo looks back to God's effective work of grace, purchasing us from the debt of sin and bringing us to our new status of being in Christ. Last week, we talked about the lyrics of so many different Christian songs currently playing on the radio that refer to the names that we carry. And this song, once again, does the same thing. Child, lift 
I remember, oh God, you're not done with me yet. Praise God for that. And it just reminds me of that promise found in Philippians when it says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. So one final thought. Why do I want you to study in context? Because if you don't, if you don't read all of Ephesians, if you don't, re- if you just pull out that one memory verse that I'm highlighting in our mem- memory verse resources this week, or if you just think about that one thought, even though we've really focused on one thought of redemption, but if you don't see that God planned your deliverance from the beginning of time, because you don't read it in context, if you don't read it in context, you don't see that our redemption is right there with our adoption and our inheritance. And if you don't read it in context, you just don't fully see. You just don't fully understand. So what's next for you? Well, I encourage you to read Ephesians. Come on, it's only six chapters. And I know that our focus has been on one concept, again, just found early on in chapter one. But how much more amazing will it be to read through Ephesians with this new understanding of redemption. And then perhaps you can kind of follow that same pattern that I suggested last week. So you'll read through Ephesians today and highlight verses or underline verses that jump out at you. And then tomorrow, go ahead and spend some time thinking about pondering the verses that you underlined, maybe even pulling out a journal. And if if God's speaking to you or thoughts are running through your head, you can write those down. Then the next day, Read all the way through Ephesians again. Um, and then it, it seems a little different this time because now you've spent some time pondering these verses, listening to what God is saying. And then you can see those verses again that you've kind of pulled out back in their context and then follow that pattern for the rest of the week. So if you're listening to this on Monday when this episode is released, you could read through Ephesians up to four times this week and then three days of pondering and meditating in between those days of the full read through. And I just can't wait to hear what God reveals to you. And as he does, go ahead and start a conversation. Hop on Twitter at Michelle Nizat or Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Michelle L. Nizat. Let's talk about what you're learning. Or better yet, you can leave a comment on this week's show notes at michellenizat.com forward slash 21. And while I'm talking about the show notes, I did run across some pretty great resources this week. I had to do some more in-depth research for myself so that I could be very clear in trying to explain this idea of redemption. And so I provided several links to you of the places that I went to get some of my research. There's a short devotional, there's some theological background, and um, even a sermon from 1978. Pretty great stuff. So just a few quick announcements before we leave. I want to let you know that I'm preparing to create some new Bible study resources, and I could really use your help. I want to make sure that whatever I'm creating is really what you are needing. And so I'm going to be reaching out to my email list for feedback on um, on those resources. My email list will not only have the opportunity to help me develop just the right tools, but will also have first access to the new tools when they're released. So I really, really want you to be in on this process. So please visit my homepage, michellenizat.com, and subscribe by giving me your name and email address in the box on the right. I promise I won't share your information with others or bombard you with email, but I do want to get you involved in this process so that I can create the best resources that are truly meeting the real needs of my listeners. And then finally, I really appreciate your re- your reviews on iTunes. It's an encouragement to me. It is also a testimony to others that the podcast is really worth listening to. And it just keeps my podcast visible to new listeners. So my promise to you is that if you take the time to review my podcast, I will take the time to personally thank you right here on the podcast. So head over to michellenizat.com forward slash review, and it should take you to the page to review the podcast. Well, that's it for this episode of More Than a Song. My next episode will be on Wake by Hillsong Young and Free. If you liked this episode, would you mind sharing it with others? I've made it really easy. You can just with one click share on Facebook, Twitter, or email. 
just head over to michellekneezat.com forward slash 21 and share um, share it that way. And while you're there, I'd love to hear from you. Go ahead and click on comment and join the conversation. Until next time, take time to meditate on God's word and consider his ways.